In an earlier animation, we reviewed how to frame a basic floor system with a hole in it for a stairway. In this animation, we'll cover the basics of framing that basic stairway. We'll look at some advanced methods in a later animation, but here we'll focus on a set of utility stairs into a crawl space. First, we'll strip back some of the framing so we can see what we're doing. The stairs must extend from the top of the finished floor below to the top of the finished floor above. Because the finished floor isn't installed yet, we must know what it'll be, or at least what its thickness will be. In this case, the upper floor is a 3 quarter inch wood flooring atop a 3 quarter inch subfloor. The lower floor will just be the slab, because this is a crawl space. According to the building code, risers should be between 7 and a quarter inches and 7 and 3 quarter inches. Tread should be between 11 and 11 and a half inches. Begin by dividing 4 foot 6 and an eighth by 7 and a half, which is the average of what the code specifies. That yields 7.2 risers, or 7 risers. So with 7 risers, there will be 6 treads. Because the floor may not be level, measure the elevation from the spot where the stairs will land and calculate the exact dimensions. So that spot will be about 6 tread depths away from the beam, and each tread is about 10 inches, so that's about 60 inches from the beam. Measure that elevation. Lo and behold, the slab isn't perfectly level. Good thing we measured in two places. 54 divided by 7 risers is about 7 and 11 sixteenths strong. If we know the utility treads are 11 and a half inches, and we want a 1 and a quarter inch overhang, the tread should be cut to 10 and a quarter inches. So the riser is 7 and 11 sixteenths strong, the tread is 10 and a quarter. But don't start cutting any wood just yet. There's still a couple things to be aware of. That last riser will be fastened to the backs of the stringers instead of to the face of the riser cut. So for this reason you need to cut the thickness of a riser off the top of the stringer. A similar thing happens at the bottom. When you add treads to the stringers and not to the slab, it makes that first step a biggie. When cutting the stringer, cut the thickness of a tread off the bottom. A down and dirty way to mark these off is to clamp a scrap of stock to a framing square intersecting those two numbers. Scribe lines along the outer edge of the framing square to indicate the tread and riser cuts. Continue stepping off the marks until you've drawn the appropriate numbers of treads and risers. If it looks funny, it is, but when you tilt your head a little bit, you'll see the stairway emerging. Draw in the floor at the bottom and then move that line up a tread thickness. Notch out where a cleat will anchor the stairs to the slab and then move up to the top. Extend the riser cut down. This is where the stringer will lean against the beam. Cut that stringer, but don't put your saw away yet. You'll need to cut the thickness of a riser out of the top of the stringer. For utility stairs like these, you can use the first stringer as a pattern for the other couple of stringers. So trace them and cut them out. But before doing that, it's usually a good idea to make sure this first stringer actually fits where it's supposed to. So give it a test drive in the stair opening. When you're confident that it fits, Go ahead and use that first one as a pattern for the others and cut them out. Assemble them on a set of sawhorses, fastening the bottom cleat to secure them to the floor. The top of the stairs will be connected with a piece of plywood extending above the stairs the height of a riser and below enough to anchor tightly. This is the final riser and it's attached through the back side of the stringers with glue and screws. Test the fit to make sure everything is as it seems and then glue the back side of that plywood and screw it off to the beam. Make sure the stairway is squared up and fasten that 2x4 cleat into the slab. Install the risers to the stringers with glue and nails and then glue and fasten the treads in place. It's a good idea to nail through the back of the riser into the edge of the tread to add support and to reduce stair squeaks. Climb up those stairs to make sure they work and then enjoy the rest of your day knowing that now you know how to build a set of rough stairs.